Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to week three of our fabulous class. Uh, hopefully you feel like you've really got your feet underneath you now as we are moving ahead into more fun and challenging projects. Uh, so yesterday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so CBC was closed, campus was closed. It was a day, uh, hopefully, for some rest and reflection and, uh, and reading a short article about <laughs> ethos and error. And now we are moving on to uh, a very good skill about article summary and analysis. And so this is another one of those like, two part assignments because you're working on summary and you're also analyzing what an article has said. Um, and that is going to be the focus for this week. So let's go ahead and take a look real quickly at that assignment. Um, so you are going to be reading Ethos and Error, um, which is a really interesting article. I know it was written in 2001. It's, it's been a while. Um, but the ideas that these managers and other business professionals put forward in their interviews with Larry Beeson, um, I think still hold a lot of applicable and helpful material as we think about ourselves and moving into this same environment that they are finding themselves in. And so, um, Beeson in this article talks about different types of writing errors and how these uh, can interfere with a reader's understanding. And of course, this is important to us as we're moving into a business field because how we write says a lot about us. It says a lot about our company and someone who is not able to articulate ideas clearly and concisely is not going to be an effective communicator. And if they're not an effective communicator, they may not do as well in the job as they could. Um, there's some very interesting research about how much money uh, bad writing costs companies. And um, I'm sure that number has only gone up in the last two years uh, because so much of the work we do now is either uh, Zoom or it's in digital form. So it's more written communication than we would have if we were all sitting together in an office building because we're sending back and forth a lot more emails. And so um, I'm sure the cost of bad communication has only risen as the pandemic has changed the way that we work. Um, but even at the time, I think the study was done in 2018, um, the number was astronomical just insane amounts of money it cost a company not only in man hours because instead of reading an email once to understand it someone has to read the email five times to sort of figure out what's going on and then they have to send up a follow-up email to get clarification on the first email and it becomes this whole like cyclical thing um so much better to be an effective communicator and how to do that is discussed a bit in Larry Beeson's article here. And so you are going to be doing a summary and then an analysis. So once again, two pieces to this assignment. We do want to treat it as a regular kind of writing prompt. So it will have an introduction and paragraphs. It should follow that kind of standard format. Uh, so the introduction, I've got bullet points for you here. I've really broken down this assignment into manageable pieces, I hope, for you as you're building your ideas here. Uh, I do want to have a thesis statement, uh, so make sure you include a clear thesis statement that includes an assertion about one of the key concepts of the article, Ethos and Error. Uh, and then you are going to create a summary, so we want one or two paragraphs of summary. We don't want the summary to take over the whole writing prompt, because then it would be as long as the article, and then why write a summary if I could just read the article, you know. So uh, one or two solid paragraphs summarizing the main ideas of Larry Beeson's article. And do make sure that you're following proper citation styles here in APA, which includes the author's name and the date of publication or the title and the date of publication. Uh, and then once you've got your summary all written, you are going to be doing uh, analysis. And we want to use all eight elements of reasoning in this um, critical thinking wheel, which was established by Richard Paul, but lots of other people have talked about these ideas in the past. Um, we want to analyze the ideas in the article, um, how they might be applicable, what kind of truth they hold, all of that good stuff. And so using this critical thinking wheel, you want to hit each of these elements at least briefly. So aim to two or three paragraphs, at least six to eight sentences. They can be longer, but at least six to eight sentences uh, using each of these elements of thought put forward by Richard Paul. 
And then we're going to wrap up this writing prompt with an assessment. So is the article any good? Does it hold any value for us? Uh, could it be improved? Um, those kind of things are where you get to have your personal opinion. So the rest of the article is pretty straightforward academic discourse. This final paragraph here is where you get to have a little bit more of a personal say in how you interpreted the article and how effective you thought it could be. And then, of course, we want to include references. Um, this is a part of APA style. Hopefully you're very familiar with it by now. Uh, you do need to include an APA format of citation at the end of the written piece. And as with most of our major assignments, I do have a rubric so you can see exactly how your work is going to be scored. I'm going to be looking at the introduction, the summary of the article, making sure it has all of these six points, the analysis of the article, making sure it's using all eight elements of the thinking wheel. I'm going to look at the assessment. Have you addressed each of these questions put forward in the prompt? I'm going to look and make sure you're using APA format appropriately, both in the citations and the way you reference the article, making sure you're including references and that your document is formatted in APA style. And then I will be looking for grammar and mechanics. You'll see that this is not a as heavily weighted category as other things like the summary and analysis and assessment. Those all have much heavier weights, but I am looking for a carefully proofread document. So do make sure you're taking the time to go back and reread your work. Um, one of the things that I have found most helpful when I'm trying to edit my work is to read it out loud to myself. I know that sounds a little crazy, uh, and if you do it in public, people will think you're crazy and you'll get some funny looks, which is fun sometimes. Uh, but it does a couple things. First, it makes us slow down and look at what was actually written on the piece of paper. Because our brains have this really cool ability to remember what we meant to say, and they just see that for some reason. Like it, it auto corrects your documents. <laughs> Uh, in your brain. Um, but if you slow down and read it out loud, your brain can't do that automatic fill in. And so it's going to see what's actually written on the page instead of what you meant to put. Um, also, if you read it out loud to someone else, a friend or family member, or a random stranger you kidnap off the street, please don't do that. Uh, it helps because what makes sense in our head may not make sense in someone else's understanding of our piece. And so if we read it out loud, we can find places where the flow is disrupted. Uh, we can find places that maybe have some confusing wording or phrasing. We can find areas where there's not a clear transition between ideas. Really, really good way to catch most of our major issues. So consider doing that uh, as part of your editing and reviewing process. And that's what we're working on this week. Uh, hopefully pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got uh, PDFs of how to create an APA styled paper. So make sure you check those out as you're formatting as well. And that's what we're doing. Hopefully you guys have a great week. If you have any questions, reach out. I'm here to help.